I welcome you all for the uh, wonderful session of advanced well testing uh, using MS Excel. And um, we are going to discuss in today's session, that is um, pressure drawdown and buildup analysis. So well testing is a part of um, a production process before you start producing um, crude oil, we will start analyzing uh, how the well is going to react towards the uh, reservoir uh, while it is producing. So we are going to do a certain tests to confirm that the well is enough potential to produce crude oil. So for that, we need to know certain parameters like uh, reservoir parameters like uh, permeability, skin, well bore damage, and um, other areas where uh, these tests will help us to understand uh, the impact of these parameters on crude oil production. Okay, without delay, let us get into uh, our uh, topic that is pressure drawdown test. Drawdown represents the change in pressure between a reservoir pressure and the wellboard pressure. So, uh, like normally we say, uh, PR. So, uh, while conducting pressure drawdown test, we are going to uh, analyze the production when there is a drawdown pressure. That is the difference between reservoir pressure and uh, bellboard pressure. So applications uh, while conducting this pressure drawdown test are reservoir permeability, skin effect, faults, interference, and the limits of the reservoir. So we can able to understand uh, while doing this test how to estimate reservoir permeability. And skin is the damage around the well that also can be estimated while conducting this pressure drawdown test and the kind of faults which were interfering. And if any drainage area is there that is interfering the drainage of that particular well that also can be analyzed. And the limits of your drainage area or reservoir that also can be understood by pressure drawdown test. Okay, how it is going to be conducted? First of all, uh, before uh, drawdown, we need to shut the well. First of all, what we have to do is we need to uh, shut the well and then we have to start producing uh, oil so that the pressure will start to get reduced from reservoir pressure. Then we will start analyzing the properties. So first of all, what we have to do is we have to consider um, uh, X and Y axis, that is uh, Y axis, we can take that as flow rate. And uh, yeah, this Y axis, we can take it as flow rate and X axis as time. And another secondary axis is pressure. So we are going to simultaneously observe flow rate versus pressure. Once oil starts to produce, how this flow rate and pressure will start getting impacted. That has to be observed. There will be an ideal graph uh, that has to be constructed. So for that, first of all, we need to start um, uh, allowing well to shut for some time so that uh, during shutting period, uh, the flow rate will start to drain until it reaches to minimum uh, level. When you observe pressure, during shutting period, the pressure will start to rise up until it reaches to reservoir pressure. It is the maximum pressure uh, where the pressure will start to rise up. Beyond that, it will not. So you are going to shut the well to reach these conditions. That the flow rate has to come close to zero and the pressure has to reach to maximum pressure that is observed to be reservoir pressure. So after that, we need to allow uh, you are well to produce. Already the condition is in such a way that we reach to uh, reservoir pressure. Right now, we have to allow well to produce so that uh, the well bore pressure will start to get reduced. Because of that, oil will start to enter into production well. So that the pressure which have been showing reservoir pressure will start to get reduced. So this is the condition we will be expecting. So that means like uh, up to here is the uh, drawdown, sorry, uh, shutting time where the pressure started to raise up until it reaches to reservoir pressure. Then after that, you started to produce well. The oil started to come into production well so that the pressure started to get 
declined. It started to decline, decline, and finally, it reaches the minimum value of it. And during pressure reduction, if you observe simultaneously production, there will be some positive uh, uh, increment of production that can be observed. So this is like initial, there are two steps that has to be followed. One is shut-in, another one is production. So during shut-in conditions, pressure will start to reach to maximum pressure that is equivalent to reservoir pressure. In the same way, uh, if you observe the uh, uh, production of it, flow rate will start to reduce and finally it reaches minimum. This happens during shut-in condition. Then after that, you start to produce. So while producing, pressure will start to decline from reservoir pressure. So it will start to reduce, it will start to get declined during production period. During that, we are going to observe some amount of flow rate so that you can see this red color shaded area is like a positive flow rate condition. So during production time, you can see some positive flow rate while uh, the pressure is being reduced. So this is the process of conducting a uh, drawdown. This is an ideal graph. If there are any variations with your real-time data, based on that, we can able to analyze these parameters like uh, reservoir permeability, screening, and other uh, parameters like uh, interference, fault, and the limits of the reservoir. Then, as if we have seen over here, it, this is like a declination uh, uh, trend line that was continuing. If you start uh, uh, drawing a tangent where exactly there is a constant trend was obtained, that is in the form of y is equal to mx plus y, because this is a straight line which doesn't pass through horizon. So this equation of that straight line can be uh, related to Horner's equation, that is PWF is equal to PI minus 162.6 Q naught B naught mu naught by mu by K into H log KT by 5 mu CT RW score minus 3.23 plus 0.87. Yes. So PWF is your uh, Y axis, that is your secondary Y axis. And PI is the uh, intercept of this straight line. Okay, This is an intercept of this straight line. Once you reach us towards the maximum pressure uh, for that, the pressure will start to get declined. So that is the intercept. So with that, there are other terms are there that will be understood. Minus 162.6 Q0, mu naught. Q0 represents flow rate of oil. Uh, B0 is formation volume factor of oil. And mu is viscosity. Uh, K represents permeability, H represents thickness. And uh, T represents the time whether it is uh, delta T or TP, that we have to separate these variables with respect to delta T and uh, um, production time, that is uh, TP. By phi represents porosity and uh, CT represents com total compressibility and RW represents well bore radius. And finally, S represents skin effect. Okay, this, this straight line where the trend it has attained that can be uh, uh, related to this equation, that is Horner's equation. Let us see uh, briefly about that um, equation. So that equation, which represents a straight line equation, that is nothing but uh, PWF is equal to PA minus 160. With this equation, let us try to separate uh, T from the overall equation, log KT by phi mu CT RW square. So let us try to separate uh, T from this whole equation. So if you separate it, let us take the term log A as log K by 5 mu CT RW square and only log T as uh, log B. So log A plus B can be written as log A into B. So here log A plus log B can be written as log A into B. So this is in the form of uh, that equation. So log A plus log B. Here it is in the form of log A into B. So if you start separating that, then the equation looks to be like this. PWF is equal to PA minus this, this equation, 162.Q0V0 mu naught by KH will be as it is, but log A into B have been separated to log A plus log B 
minus the remaining term was kept as it is. Why we are doing this is we want to take uh, this, sorry, log t outside of this bracket and remaining part will be kept as intercept. So if you uh, separate uh, these terms from log t in this bracket, you are going to get pwf is equal to pi minus uh, 162.6 not b not mu by kh into log t, which is a separate variable. We have taken this outside and the remaining minus 162.6 q not b not mu by kh into remaining terms was kept as it is. So uh, we are trying to make this big equation to be in the form of y is equal to mx plus c, but so that we can able to estimate slope of that equation. So that is the uh, uh, agenda of uh, why we are doing this separation. Then after that, if you start observing it, this orange color equation, that 162.6 mu naught, v naught, mu naught, the same equation I have kept it here, but only thing is we changed colors. So white color one is y axis and orange color equation is uh, slope, that is m and the log t, which is in golden color, that is uh, uh, x axis and remaining everything, whatever it was written in blue, that is intercept. So if you could observe this y-axis, that is PWF and M represents 162.6 Q naught, B naught, mu by KH, and X represents log T. So this is like Y is equal to MX plus remaining whole term, which is in the form of blue, that is kept, that kept as and y intercept that is c so this is the ideal uh, graph of pressure drawdown test you can see on y axis um, wellbore pressure is there on x axis uh, delta t this is sorry the production time that is time was given in with respect to hours and these the, the x axis was written in the form of log uh, axis actually this is not a direct axis this is log log graph so you can see the point one R, 10 R and 100 R. So it is not one, two, three. So X axis should be in the form of logs, logarithmic time. We have to mention that in the form of logarithmic time. And when it comes to Y axis, it is directly shutting, sorry, uh, producing pressure. That is like a, a flowing bottom hole pressure that is PWF. So Y axis is PWF and X axis is simply TP. So that, that to log t and this is the equation y is equal to mx plus c and we can see and m is represented as minus 162.6 q naught b naught mu by kh so if you know the value of m by this straight line this is the drawdown graph and these are the points which were real time points where they were imposed on ideal graph that is drawdown graphs you can see there is a deviation at starting of the uh, graph, you can observe there is a deviation and uh, it, the time taken for that deviation is almost one hour. It is near to one hour. Like after that, it started to intersect on the straight line. So all the points are imposing on the straight line. So until that point, these uh, points have been deviated from the straight line. And this happens because of uh, skin and well board damage. So skin is the damage around the well and well board damage is additional kind of fluids that will start uh, including inside your original crude oil so that the pressure will start to show a hike initially. Actually, this hike is not a real production of crude oil, but it is the mixture of your work over chemicals or else any kind of drilling fluids. If they were mixed uh, at the perforations, then with that, oil will start to come inside showing this much height. Actually, this is a kind of damage uh, that was understood to be wellbore damage. So this happens up to almost equivalent to one hour. Then after that, it will attain its slope, which is equivalent to your ideal graph. So this is the drawdown graph. So the slope is almost same. All the points are having, having slope equivalent to this ideal graph. Then after that, again, there is a deviation. So this deviation occurs, why? Because of reduction of uh, uh, reservoir pressure. This could happen because of uh, lack of energy. Reservoir energy is started to decline. Probably 
uh, water might be the one which will hold reservoir pressure to be constant. But after that, water drive mechanism also will drain off. Because of that, uh, the deviation will start to observe at the end of the uh, drawdown test. So this could happen because of pseudo steady state uh, region condition. So this is the place, this is the condition where a real challenge comes for uh, a reservoir engineer, how to maintain uh, this condition for longer period. So this is the reason of the reduction of reservoir energy that makes these points deviated deviate from the original uh, graph. So that is, this is the original graph trend and this started to decline. This could happen because of lack of reservoir drive energy. And initially we can observe the deviation because of wellbore damage. And finally we can see the deviation which is on the negative side that is because of lack of reservoir energy. So this is the uh, part of uh, up to now we have discussed about pressure drawdown test and uh, the same way how pressure drawdown test have been conducted, uh, the reverse of that will be observed in pressure buildup test. So the application to uh, pressure buildup test will be reservoir permeability, skin, faults, interference limit, almost the same thing what we have estimated for drawdown, we can get uh, that kind of information from build up also. Here, uh, we are going to observe Q versus time and uh, pressure versus time uh, simultaneously. So during drawdown, the well will start to shut for some time, then after that it will be produced. So these are the steps. Step one will be like, well will be shutted and the step two where the well started to get produced because of the pressure will start to decline. So here, uh, the second step of pressure drawdown test will be the first step of pressure buildup. That means the well will be produced for some time. So during production, the pressure will start to get reduced. It will start reaching to minimum. Why? Because the pressure is being uh, reduced while producing crude oil towards your production well. So while producing, you can see a positive value of Q and the pressure started to get reduced and finally it reaches to the minimum value of uh, uh, pressure. So that minimum value from there itself, uh, we are going to start shutting. So during shutting condition, that means during closing of the well, we will expect that pressure will start to rise up. So until uh, production time, the pressure was observed to be reduced. Then after that, we will start going for uh, shutting condition. So during that, the pressure will start to rise up. So in that way, there won't be any production from uh, TP onwards. At the end of TP, uh, there won't be any production. So zero flow rate, but the pressure will start at to rise up. Here also, initially it will not take its own slope, but it will take some time. And after that, it will attain a trend. A constant trend will be attained after some time. So this also could happen because of either skin effect or wellbore uh, damage effect. So if you observe real-time conditions, you can see uh, y-axis, that is um, um, y-axis will be bottom hole pressure and x-axis will be TP plus delta T by delta T. So here TP represents production time, delta T represents shutting time. Here we have two axes. One is TP plus delta T by delta T and another one is delta T. So we have actually two graphs in this whole image. We can observe that there are two trend lines which were superimposed on each other. And these points started to intersect at one particular location. Then from there onwards, this intersection have continued. So these intersected points shows that from here onwards, pressure started to build up only because of crude oil which is accumulating near the perforations. But until that, there is a deviation from your earlier graph to the other graph, other points. This happens only because of uh, wellbore damage or skin effect or any kind of uh, damage that is around the well. So this could be the reason why these points have been deviated initially. Then after that, they will attain an intersection and it will start to continue. But actually this graph is two graphs. Two graphs have been superimposed on each other. And uh, x-axis will be logarithmic uh, 
logarithmic uh, values and if you take y axis that are straight uh, drawdown pressure values so the equation for this this is also a straight line doesn't pass through horizon so y is equal to mx plus c so here the c value will not be as big as the value that we have seen in drawdown test but it is simply pi so you can see the intercept of this straight line which is equivalent to pi and x axis will be log tp plus delta t by delta t you can see the x axis value here so TP represents production time and uh, delta T is shutting time. If you want to estimate uh, any parameter through pressure buildup test, we need two time scales. One is production time and the other one is shutting time. So if you want to estimate the parameters through drawdown test, we may need only one uh, time that is production time. Then after that, uh, uh, Slope of that uh, straight line is given as 162.6 Q0 mu P0 mu by KH and Y axis is PWF. So this is the slope. So if you have the data based on that data, you can estimate slope. If you know the value of slope, then with other values like uh, Q0, B0 and mu naught H, you can estimate the value of K. Why? Because M is equal to this whole term. So if you know the value of slope, you can estimate the value of so let us try to estimate the value of uh, uh, permeability by pressure drawdown and uh, build up test by using uh, excel <clears throat> and we have reservoir data like uh, thickness was mentioned to be 130 feet thickness of the reservoir that is h which was mentioned to be uh, 130 feet and um, well bore radius that is uh, observed to be 0.25 feet and surface flow rate this is small, uh, capital QO there are like two uh, Qs will be there one is capital QO and uh, small QO so normally small QO represents flow rate at reservoir and the units for that is barrels per day so if you are measuring uh, uh, the flow rate at surface, that is, that will be equivalent to capital QO, which will be having units of STB that represents stock tank barrel per D represents D. Generally, we are measuring these values with respect to reservoir. So uh, we are going to cross multiply QO with BO. BO represents formation volume factor of oil. So small QO is equal to capital QO into BO. So if you want to know the value of flow rate at reservoir conditions, then we need to cross multiply capital QO into BO. Then we're going to get the value of flow rate at reservoir conditions. So BO is formation volume factor of oil and the value for that is 1.14 barrels per STD. And mu, that is viscosity with respect to oil, that is equal to 3.93 centipoise. And CT represents total compressibility, that is equal to 8.74 into 10 power minus 6 PSI inverse. And porosity, 5 is equal to 20%, so that you can take it as 0.2. And initial reservoir pressure was observed to be PI, that is equivalent to... Uh, 1154 PSI. So this is the reservoir data that we have and we need to, uh, uh, we have to use this data to estimate the value of permeability by the pressure data, which is respected to uh, pressure drawdown and buildup. If you have that data, we can start estimating the value of permeability by using this reservoir data. So let us try to see uh, uh, pressure data. So you can observe over here, uh, we have two different pressure data are available. One is pressure drawdown, that is uh, in the form of green color data. What you can observe from here is that time in hours and PWS wellbore pressure that was measured with respect to PSA. So this is drawdown pressure. So uh, zero R, 0 0.12 hours. So time is incrementing with respect to hours in the same way when you observe the pressures, it started to decrement. So this is drawdown, why? Because oil started to produce. So initially the value is 4,412, the second value is 38, 
one to it started to reduce so if you could observe directly we can see there is a decrement uh, in the value of uh, pressures that shows that oil started to enter inside the uh, well bore and here pressure build up test we have shut in time and the production plus shut in time and the production plus shut in by shut in and well bore pressure so you can see here well bore pressure started to rise up like since it is build up test 27613057 so it is incrementing the pressure values are incrementing and shut in time with respect to that that is also incremented so if you want to estimate here if you would observe the problem like uh, the data was available for drawdown is pwf is there and the time is there that is producing time and shut in time is said that is delta p and pw is there so let us try to analyze whether we can able to estimate uh, permeability by this data so if we, we need to know if you want to understand permeability for drawdown test so what are the things that are required so i'm just going for drawdown test actually so we want to see the equations uh, so yeah this is the equation we have to observe uh, let us try to understand uh, what are the data that we have, whether it is enough to estimate permeability uh, with the help of these equations. So if you could observe, this is the straight line that we can generate why because we have time scale as well as PWF. So we have producing time in the data and PWF is also there. So here what we have to do is we need to plot this graph and we need to observe the trend whether it is moving in a constant stable way. If not, the deviation, whatever the deviation was there, that cannot be considered to estimate the value of drawdown test. So the deviated parts, ha parts has to be ignored, either at starting or at the end. So the deviated parts are considered to be errors. So these errors has to be ignored. Apart from that, the constant trend that was observed on the drawdown scale, that only has to be considered. That is the first thing that has to be kept in mind. Second thing is we have all the data. So like we need to estimate the value of permeability, that is K. And this is the equation to estimate permeability. That is 162.6 Q0 B0 mu by M into H. So we have with the data QO, we have BO, we have mu O, and we have H, but not M. And this M is the slope which was generated by this graph. And as I said earlier, uh, we have to ignore the points which were not intersecting on the uh, straight line or else we, there is a deviation that has to be ignored at starting stage. Then after that also, we have to see until where the trend have been followed constantly. Then after that, the deviation at the end that also has to be ignored to calculate slope. So these are considered to be the errors. The slope has to be estimated from the point from here to the point where it is ending here. So the slope has to be estimated in this region that is transient flow region where it is steady, where the uh, uh, points are almost steady. Then only we can able to get proper value of permeability for that reservoir. So these are the points that has to be kept in mind before uh, analyzing this in uh, Excel. So let us uh, try to put these values in Excel. So I'm going for the uh, data. So I'm going to impart uh, these um, uh, points, these tables in Excel. One is pressure drawdown, another one is pressure buildup. The same way the deviation parts has to be ignored, even for pressure uh, buildup also. Here also, uh, pressure buildup also, we have to see, we have to construct two graphs and we need to superimpose on each other and we need to attain the intersection points and we need to start estimating the slope for these intersecting points, not the points which have been deviated from each other. So we need to understand what are the points that were intersecting. So first of all, if you want to estimate the value of permeability, if, if you want to estimate the value of slope, we need to construct two graphs. That is one is PWF versus TP plus delta T by delta T, one graph. 
second graph is PWF versus delta T. That is the second graph. And we need to impose, superimpose on both. And you can see there are two scales. On the top, there is one scale and down there is another scale. So here there are two graphs which were superimposed on each other. And they started to see what are the points that were intersecting and those points which were intersected, that points only has to be considered to estimate slope. So with that slope, we can able to, by this, if you have the value of slope, we can get the value of permeability by because other values are already available in the data. So right now I'm going to take you to Excel sheet and So the pressure drawdown, uh, I think everyone can see the uh, Excel graph over here. So the drawdown graph I already kept. So the drawdown data I already kept. So you can see, I'm going to increase the size of it. Okay. So here, this is an axis for um, time graph. And uh, this is for wellbore pressure. So time in hours, wellbore pressure was observed in hours and we need already the data, what is there in the presentation I kept over here. So we have thickness, uh, wellbore radius is there, uh, surface flow rate is there and formation volume factor of oil is there, viscosity is there, total compressibility, porosity and uh, initial reservoir pressure. To estimate the value of permeability, that is K, we need QO that is already available, DO is there, mu is there, H is there, but we need to estimate slope. And for that, we need to construct pressure drawdown graph. So let me start uh, inserting this whole uh, table uh, to get the drawdown. So X axis will be always on left side and remaining parts which were there on the uh, next to the uh, X axis will all comes as Y axis. So X axis is time and Y axis is PWF. So I'm going to insert that in graph. So I got pressure drawdown graph, which was observed to be like this. So this is the graph that was observed as pressure drawdown. So let us make some adjustments in this. So uh, I don't need uh, the points up to zero. Uh, I can visualize up to 3000. So that could be a better option. So I'm giving, uh, almost uh, 3,000. Maximum is five million. The maximum I can give up to 4,500. So right now you can see a pressure card on graph. And I'm adjusting x-axis uh, so that uh, the minimum value is zero. So right now we need to estimate the slope from the points where it started to take a constant uh, time. And another thing is uh, these points like y-axis is bottom hole pressure that is PWF and x-axis is TP that was like produce production time. So when it comes to the graph, that is log logarithmic uh, production time is there. I'm going to put a screenshot of the graph. So if you could observe this graph, the graph here. The time axis, which is on uh, x axis, is uh, related to logarithmic time. So we need to convert this time to be logarithmic time. For that, we need to go format axis. And just give the value as logarithmic scale. So we will be getting an equation that is like you can see these two trends are almost. Uh, 
you can compare the graph, ideal graph and the graph what we have got it. So we can see there is some kind of deviation at starting like this, like this, that kind of deviation, what it has started initially a little bit away from that. Then after that, there is a constant trend started to observe and from this point onwards, it started to reduce. Probably two points at the last two points started to deviate from this trend, that's constant slope, slope trend, whatever we have attained. From this point uh, to the point up to here, all are going in a constant uh, trend. So for that, it, we have to consider only that actually. So let us try to uh, understand we need to calculate slope for those points which were in between transient region. We are not going to include the points which were deviated from transient region. That means these are all deviated points which were considered to be under error. So let us see here the point is 14.4 on x axis and 3573 on y axis. So let us try to find out what is 14.4 on x axis. So here, this is the point. This is the point we are supposed to uh, consider at starting of the transient region and the end of transient region is from here onwards, they started to deviate. Probably this is the point where it started to, that is 266 is the point on X axis where the deviation started. So you can observe this is the point where it started to deviate. So for we have to consider only the points in between them. So we need to consider only the points, these points, to estimate the value of slope. So I'm going to right now estimate the value of slope like this. So I'm going to use a formula, slope, slope formula to estimate. So for that, what we have to do is just equal to slope. This is a function we are going to use in Excel to estimate slope for a particular points, not for all the points. We, we can do it with two different ways. We can add a trend line and we can get uh, y is equal to mx plus c equation. With that also, we can estimate slope. But why I'm using this formula is we are considering certain points, the transient region points. We are not going to consider those points which were deviated from that slope. So with that, I'm going to estimate the value of permeability. So slope, for these points. So known y axis, known y axis. Here we need to understand y axis are all straightforward axis. That is like uh, x axis will be on left side, y axis will be on right side. So I'm going to use, this is the starting of that y axis and I'm not going to use until the end, but I'm going to use from here onwards up to the yellow shaded highlighted region. So C19 to C35, that is known Y axis. But when it comes to X axis, these were not direct X axis. These were logarithmic X axis. Sorry, yes. So uh, in this formula, we are, we are not going to use directly the values of all this. We are going to use log, why? Because we have changed the values of X axis to become logarithmic X axis. So we are going to use logarithmic term, so log of x-axis. I'm going to use the number. So the number which was uh, starting number is this, and I'm going to in insert all the numbers which were included up to that. So I'm going to close the bracket, double bracket, and I've got the slope to be minus 76.46. So this is the slope for the point which has started from here and where it has ended near to the transient region, where the deviation was there that should not be considered. So we have the value of slope, that is M. With the value of slope, I'm going to put that value over here with the other data, what it is available. Right now, I mean, we need a reservoir data. So that is here, it is there already. I kept so that we can able to get these values. So let us try to, uh, estimate the value of permeability by the data. So first of all, minus uh, 162.6, do not, do not you, where we are going to put that in bracket, that is 162.6 into Q naught, that is 348 STB per day. Simply we can use it as 348 into B naught, that is 
0.14 from the data 1.14 into mu naught that is 3.93 3.93 i'm going to close the numerator terms by again i'm going to start with the bracket and the slope we got it that is minus uh, 76 so i'm selecting that cell as slope into uh, thickness was observed to be 130 feet 130 feet i close the brackets and i'm going to iterate it to get the value of uh, permeability to be 25 so the permeability will be measured with respect to millidarcy so we have got permeability for the given data to be 25.5 uh, millidarcy so this is the way we can able to estimate the value of permeability by uh, getting the value of slope so we need to understand how this graph have been generated you can see the similarity of the ideal graph as well as the graph what we got it and the deviated part that has to be ignored and the part from transient period that has to be considered until the trend that have been followed then after that where the deviation started to decline that also has to be ignored on the starting of the graph as well as at the end of the graph the, those deviations has to be ignored we need to find specific slope for specific points we are not going to consider all the points whatever we have so in real time we are going to get like these uh, uh, deviations that has to be ignored to get accurate uh, permeability values in the same way let us try to understand um, uh, pressure build up test so this is something which is uh, which we need to do something more than pressure drawdown so if you want to estimate the value of uh, permeability so we need to construct two graphs and these two graphs has to be superimposed one on another excel has a, excel is a kind of tool where it will help us to understand these kind of impositions very clearly so uh, where this excel will play a very significant role imposition like you, you need a trace paper you need to put on one graph and another graph and you start to iterate all the points where they are intersecting so right now I'm going to show you how these two graphs, uh, what are the points that were intersected on these two graphs? It's very simple and let us try to understand one graph we need to generate that is between PWF versus TP plus delta T by delta T. So already the value of TP plus delta T by delta T is available. So we need to estimate the value of that with PWF and another one is simply delta t well sorry pwf versus delta t so these two graphs has to be superimposed on each other so let us try to uh, estimate these values i'm going to put this graph aside uh, here i'm not going to get an axis on the top side i'm going to get, get these axis which was delta t t b plus delta t by delta t both axes will be on the lower side so that is the only difference, but the values, what you're going to get will be accurate. So, and with that, we are going to estimate the slope. So we don't know what are the points they, those were intersecting on each other. First of all, uh, we need to find out those points which were intersecting on each other. So for that, we need PWF, which will be on Y axis side. And I'm going to uh, first estimate the value of Delta T versus PWF. So I have selected a DT as Delta T, and I have selected PWF as Y axis. And I, I will start uh, giving an Cartesian equation, sorry, a graph. So we have a pressure built up graph to be like this. And again, uh, limits, let us try to change our Y axis limits to be minimum as 2500 so that the graph looks alike. Okay, so this is the pressure buildup graph that we have, which is delta T versus, this is like uh, Y axis is delta T, sorry, Y axis is PWF and X axis is delta T. So we can name that for reference. So this is PWF and this is I'm giving simply delta T as dt. Okay. 
So d dot t that is delta t. So this is let's now we get this. It's the last. Okay. So let us keep this beside, and we need another graph that was that was supposed to be constructed. That is delta t b plus delta t uh, by delta t versus d w f. So these two graphs. I'm going to construct one more graph with respect to uh, x-axis as t p plus delta t by delta t. So I got a graph like this, which is t p plus delta t by delta t. And here we need both x-axis should be in the form of logarithmic. So let us try it. Why? Because you can see the axis if you could observe over here. Both are in the form of logarithmic. So we need to convert x axis on both sides to become logarithmic. I'm going to use format axis and I'm going to add logarithmic term to that. And in the same way, here also, I'm going to use logarithmic. So we have equations both to be like that. And to make it more simpler, what I will do is, I'm going to adjust the axis, that is y axis, towards the end of the graph, overall graph. For that, we need to go for labels and we have to use uh, low, so that this will be adjusted at the end of the graph, okay. So right now, uh, what we are supposed to do is we need to impose these two graphs on each other and we have to see those points which were intersecting on each other. And another thing is, uh, let us adjust the y-axis limits uh, to be 2500 to see exactly how much. So the minimum value for y-axis on uh, the first graph is 2500 so that it will be easier to be understood in the same way uh, minimum value for uh, uh, pwf versus delta t graph also will be 2500 so to make it ideal so this is 2500 Yes, both are 2,000 yes, yes, correct. So right now we have both uh, graphs, one on another. So we need to superimpose one on another. So for that, what we have to do is, let us select the graph which we want to superimpose. I want to superimpose PWF versus DT on PWF versus TP plus delta T by delta T. I'm going to give you the values for this. TP plus delta T by delta T. By delta T. I need to make this a bigger graph. Okay. So I'm going to remove these grid lines. Here also, I'm going to remove the 
red lines. And right now, I'm going to just shade the region of the graph which I want to. So I'm going to give no fill. So if I use no fill, it will give a transparent outlook of that. So for that, it is going back side of the, I need to bring it front. Front. Yes, it came front. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to superimpose one on another to see how many points they are going to intersect. So for that, we need to match with the point of whatever we have. Here, there is no need to bother about uh, the points what are like intermixing. They are actually in reverse order. So I have done a small mistake. Uh, the mistake is I need to convert this order, which is not equivalent to the order of that. I need to just change it in a reverse way. So you can see 10 power minus 4, which is on the right side of it. Here it is right side, here it is on left side. So for that, I just need to change the order of this, this, or this uh, axis. So I'm just changing the order of this axis yeah this this x axis it is like ascending order but actually it should be in descending order so we can do that by just going to format axis values in reverse order so right now you can see uh, where 10 power uh, 4 10 power 3 10 square 10 and 1 the same way how you can see it on your ideal graph Ten power four, ten power three, ten square. So when it comes to the above axis, it starts with one and ten. So here also, we are going to start with one and ten. So you can see here one, ten like that. So this is what exactly we need these conditions to be adjusted. Okay, you can see right now, uh, both are almost intersecting on each other. We need to see the points where exactly they both are matching. So let us see. So here the matches. This is what manually we do with trace paper, but here we are going to see the points where the both graphs are being matched. So we can see, yes, this is the point where exactly most of the points on the graph with TP plus delta T by T and delta T graphs were matching at this particular location. So it started with uh, not this point, neither this one. Uh, it started with the point nearby here, probably a uh, point five two and that 3,249, which is on Y axis. From here onwards, it started to come close to up to here then afterward it started to deviate from here onwards there's small deviation that also you can see that intersection points started at here and it ended nearby somewhere around here so that is around 10 so it started in x-axis around 0.52 and it ended near to the value of 10.05 let us find out those values so that um, So again, I will match this. Um, yes. So these are the points, the point which is starting nearby 0.52, which is on x axis. So this is the point. And the end point is coming around here, yeah, that is 10.05. 10.05. So, this is the end point. So, we can use these terms to estimate slope. For that, 
for estimating slope, you can take any of these intersecting points to estimate the value of slope. Let us try to estimate the value of slope for the points Tb plus delta T by delta T EWF. So the same way we are going to use slope here, uh, x-axis is as it is, but first of all, we need y-axis, known y-axis and uh, y-axis is as it is, x-axis have changed, but y-axis is PWF. So from here onwards, we are selecting until the shaded region that is up to here, comma, and x-axis, which is in logarithmic values. So log of the points corresponding to the uh, x-axis, we are going to take y-axis. So if you take those values, we got the slope to be minus 43. If the slope value is minus 43 and we are going to impact the points over here with the data. So we need that reservoir data. So that is here. Let's try to bring it to top. Yes. Yes. That is equal to minus 162.6.6 into Q naught, that is 348 into B naught, that is 1.14 into mu, that is 3.93. Close the bracket and by we'll start with mu bracket, that is M, which is equal to minus 43 into h that is 140. So we got the value of permeability with uh, pressure product or buildup as 44 millidarcy. So earlier we got it 25 millidarcy and right now with pressure drawdown test we got the value to be 25 millidarcy and right now we got the value of uh, uh, permeability with respect to buildup that is uh, 44 millimeters. So this is how we are going to estimate the value of uh, uh, reservoir parameters. Uh, if you have the data like pressure data and uh, other, uh, other reservoir uh, parameter data. So with that, we are going to end for today's session. I hope you understand. Thank you very much. Um, have a great day. Up to you, Nikhil.